So now let's talk about the structured perceptron, now that you understand how the regular perceptron works. Things get a little bit more complicated now. And so now we have a sequence coming in, and we need to label that sequence. And we need to update the weights where we make a mistake. But here, our mistakes are part of a sequence. So how do we know which features to punish when we make a mistake? So there are two things that change here. Inference becomes more tricky, and so this is what we talked about before with the Viterbi algorithm. And then we need to update the weights given the inference that we made. And if our inference exactly matches the true label, we don't need to update the weights. But if it doesn't match the true label, which features are we going to punish? And so now the perceptron algorithm looks a little bit different. And so now our training set, the labels are going to be sequences. We're still going to initialize our weight vector with zero, and so now we're going to define this function f that does this search over possible labels and gives us the argmax label, the label that gives us the highest score. And so if we get the answer right, we do nothing. If we don't get it right, what we're going to do is we're going to take the feature vector of the true label sequence and subtract out the feature vector of the label sequence we predicted through our function f. And then at the end of the day, we output our parameters w as usual. So let's see what this might look like for a part of speech ta task. Our true answer for the sequence, the man bit the dog, has bit as a verb. And let's say that we get that wrong, that we say that bit is a noun instead. So let's assume the same kinds of features that we had before, scores for going from one part of speech to the next, and scores going from a part of speech to a particular word. So this is exactly like what we had before. And so the features that will get higher weights as the result of our structured perceptron update will be the transitions going from noun to verb, because that was in the true sequence, but not in the wrong sequence, verb to determiner, and verb to bit. So these are the, all of the things that we should have seen, but the things that we predicted that ended up being wrong will get smaller weights. So noun to noun will get a smaller weight, noun to determiner will get a smaller weight, and noun to bit will get a smaller weight as well. So this is the overall algorithm. We'll do an example of this in class, but next what we're going to talk about is how to think about how often this will get the answer right, how many errors will it make, and what happens if our search over the structure that we're predicting isn't good enough.